I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on representing data. In this video, we will discuss how histograms can be used. One of the very important question here is also to distinguish between bar graphs and histograms. In junior classes, we say that the bar graphs and histograms have common features. They represent data with bars and these bars are along x and y axis. Now we'll actually see how are they different, right? So basically they both represent some kind of information and this information is represented with the bars. So for a bar graph, we may have bars something like this, right? So we have a bar like this, uh, well, another bar like this. So normally when we sketch a bar graph, we will have same width of each bar, however, there will be distance in between them, right? Something like this will represent a bar graph. On the other hand, if we have these bars joined together, right, so we call them as histograms. So in histograms, we like to uh, make bars without any gap, so kind of like this, something like this, correct. So that becomes a histogram. Now you will notice that when I was drawing the histograms, I didn't really bother to make their width same. Now that is a very important parameter. So here we have equal widths. But in this case of histogram, we can have unequal widths. Now my question here is why it is so. All right. uh, well, here we have five very important questions. If you answer these questions, you will actually know the real differences between bar graphs and histograms. Question number one is, how many variables do they represent? Question number two, what are, what is represented on their x-axis? So this is your x-axis, that is y-axis. What is represented on the x-axis for both of them? What is represented on the y-axis? How to find frequency from these graphs? And question number five is, why unequal bars can be used for histogram? Now these are five critical questions which I like you to pause the video, answer, right? Then you will understand really what is the difference between these two. To begin with variables, in bar graph normally we'll have two variables. But in histogram there will only be one variable. To give you an example, let us say we are talking about marks, right? So, so in a in a histogram, we are only looking into, let's say, percentage marks. Only one variable. In the other case of bar graph, we'll now combine the answer for question number two, which is what is represented on the x-axis. Well, here in a bar graph, we have different categories. Right? If you're talking about, let's say, fruits, we would have apples, oranges, banana, grapes, and other things, right? These are all different categories. On the other hand, in a histogram, we have a continuous data most of the time. When I say continuous data, we cannot exclude discrete data. Well, discrete data can also be utilized to make a histogram right it all depends how do we consider the intervals right now since these are all different categories they are placed separately along the x-axis as shown in a histogram it is a continuous data it has to represent like this even if we have a discrete data we show it in intervals 
which are not overlapping but they are continuous uh, and they will represent data in the form of graphs shown here. Now next question here is what is represented on the y-axis? So here on the y-axis for each category you get number of items right. So here we have the frequency. number of items of that kind right so that is the frequency which is represented on the y-axis in this case what is that well since we are allowed the width here to be different here we actually have frequency density for the same width we could say that this is also frequency however the number of items which you see in a bar graph can be read directly from the frequency, correct? However, here it is the area which we are looking into, correct? So we have answered the other two questions. Question number three, what is represented on the y-axis? The frequency of each category is represented on the y-axis of bar graph. However, in a histogram, we represent frequency density. So the idea here is to have frequency and here we have frequency density. That is a huge difference. So how do we find frequency from these graphs? Well, this frequency you can read from the graph directly, right? Read y-axis. To get the frequency here, you have to find the area of each bar. So area represents the frequency in the case of histogram. And now you understand why we can have unequal bars in a histogram, but in bar graph, the width has no significance, right? So here width has no significance. You could make them equal or unequal. Width has no significance. So let me draw a line here. These are the characteristics of bar graph. Here, width relates to area, correct? Width and height, correct? And therefore, you could have different combination it all depends on the density and to make it very clear i have an example we look into this example to understand how this data which is there before us can be represented by a histogram not by a bar graph and how the area reflects to the frequency given in this information right so the question for you is Display the following data and highlight key features of histogram. So if you look into the data, we are showing marks and the frequency. Let us say number of students getting those many marks. So these groups are the categories which we have. They are not overlapping. 0 to 30, where 0 is included, not 30, correct? So this is like saying the value of marks M is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 30. Do you see that? And here we are saying it is greater than or equal to 30, right? But it is less than 50. That's what it means. So this bracket means included. Parenthesis shown here means 50 is not included in this category. Now the third one is from 50 to 60. Well, the very first group 0 to 30 has 30 as its interval. Here we have 20 and then 10. That means we are talking about different width, right? So when we are having different widths, we could only draw histogram. A bar graph cannot be considered. Right. And how can we draw it? By finding the frequency density. So what we need to find here is basically frequency density. 
Once we know the frequency density, then we'll calculate the height of each bar, width is known from the interval, and we'll get our result. So I hope you understand this part. Now we'll move along and see how to sketch a histogram for the given data. So I hope you have understood the difference between histogram and bar graph and also the importance of histograms. Now let's take this example and sketch a his histogram. Display the following data and highlight key features of histogram. We are given percentage marks 0 to 30, 30 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70 and 70 to 100. Number of students getting that percentage of marks is the frequency. So frequency is 12, 12, 14, 20, and 9. To sketch a histogram with unequal widths, we need to calculate the frequency density. So let's find the frequency density now. Frequency density can be calculated by dividing the frequency by the interval, right? So it is equals to frequency divided by interval. That is frequency density, correct? So let's try to figure this out. So here we have 12 as the frequency and the interval is from 0 to 30. So we're going to divide this by 30. In this case, 12 will be divided by 50 to 30 to 50, which is the interval of 20. In this case, 14 will be divided by 10. Here, 20 will be divided by 10 again and 9 will be divided by 30. So when you divide 12 by 30, you get 0 0.4. Here, dividing 12 by 20 means 0 0.6. 14 divided by 10 is 1.4. 20 divided by 10 is 2. 9 divided by 30 is 3. 0 0.3. Correct? So that is how we get the frequency density. Do you get the idea? Now, we should see how to sketch the graph, right? So, okay. So, we're going to make a bar graph. There are five intervals with us. They are unequal, right? These five intervals are unequal. So, uh, we have frequency density varying up to two. So, what I will do here is... Uh, draw a rough sketch of a kind of make a graph paper for you. So let's say this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's say this is five and this is ten for us. Okay. So we'll have a density of 1 here and 2 there. So each is divided into 0 0.2, right? So that is how we have had our divisions. Now, this interval we need from 0 to 10. Okay, so let's draw 10 lines here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Correct. So the very first one is 0 to 30. That means we'll consider from here 10, 20, and 3, 30. Frequency is 12. Frequency density is 0 0.4. So 0 0.2 and this is 0 0.4. So that is our first bar. Do you see that? So within this interval, which is from 0 to 30, we now have an area of 30 times 0.4, right? So this is 0 0.4. So if you do 30 times 0.4, you get the frequency 12. You get an idea, right? So that is how we're going to do it. Is that clear? So each square here is 10 times 0.2 means 2, correct? So so 6 times 2 is 12. That is what it is. Perfect. Now, I would like you to pause the video and complete this histogram and then compare with my results. 
The next one twirls the exactly same frequency. However, the interval is from 30 to 50. So within this, now this 12 means density of 0.6. So this graph bar is going to be higher, right? So it will be 0.6 high. So you see, for the same frequency, we have different heights. But the area is same. Area is same, right? So this is 20 times 0.6 giving you 12 and this is 30 times 0.4 giving you 12 does make sense to you perfect next group is from 50 to 60 now 50 to 60 is interval of 10 only and the density is 1.4 that means this is 1.2.4 right so if you have a true graph paper you will see more accurate results however here we can show you exactly how they are going to differ or relatively how do they look like so you can see that these three bars are of unequal width they do represent the data which is the frequency and area actually tells you what is the frequency not the height correct not the height that is kind of very important to understand right so we have here from 30 to 50 and now 50 to 60 and after 60 we have 60 to 70 here the density is 2 so the next graph will be even higher that bar represents from 60 to 70 frequency of 20 because it is 2 times 10 which is 20 area of the graph so I hope the concept is absolutely clear the last one here is from 70 to 100 and it is 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is somewhere in between 0 0.2 and 4. So we could just go in between. That's it. And that is 100. So that is how we are going to show the graph. This is percentage marks. And what is this? This is frequency density. Perfect. So that is how we are going to draw the histogram to represent the given information. Is that clear? So what you notice here is that we can have unequal bar widths, right? So we can have unequal bars. Second thing which you notice is frequency is area. not the height right not the height right thirdly we do see it's a continuous data no gaps continuous data right no overlapping of data right so that is how we can do it so i hope the concept is absolutely clear now these are major differences on the vertical y-axis in a histogram we normally distribute uh, we show frequency density not just frequency right only when the bar widths are same you can treat frequency density as frequency okay you could do it but strictly speaking it is frequency density here and the frequency is represented by area right so so that is kind of very very important thing to remember right so frequency is area of the bar and we have unequal bar widths and of course, you know, there is no gap between the bars of a histogram. And that makes his histogram very unique and different from bars. And of course, it represents data, right? Finally, let me write down. It represents data in single variable. We're only talking about marks, right? We're not talking about apples and how many, bananas and how many. We are saying marks of students, right? So that is just one variable. You count number of students and write them in frequency. So I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.